Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you though, because you mentioned like when you lost your sight, what was some of those like, you know, can you kind of describe to everybody or talk about um, some of the struggles and the challenges that you faced when you were trying to achieve all of your goals? Sure. Um, when I lost my sight, um, I had, you know, just gotten married like the year prior. I had bought a house, mm -hmm. um, received a, a really nice promotion at work. Uh, my three sons were about ready to, uh, you know, finish school and things were just going very, very well. So this came out of the middle of, of nowhere. And when it happened, I thought, you know, the first thing I thought, because we don't know what we don't know, I thought I'm going to have to quit working. I'm going to have to, um, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew that there was going to be some major changes in my life. Mm -hmm. um, thank goodness I was able to connect with, um, you know, an organization that I became a part of. It was uh, my local Pennsylvania Council of the Blind affiliate of mm -hmm. uh, the American Council of the Blind. And it was through them and my friends, they became my friends. Um, they helped me to see that even though I had lost my sight, that didn't mean that, you know, my life as I knew it was over, you know, that I could continue working. I was going to have to learn how to do things differently. So yeah. I did have to eventually give up driving, you know, and, and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think, um, it's, I definitely feel like just, I kind of want to go back to the magazine and, and the website for a little bit, because I think that it's such a great idea that you decided to come up with where really having blind or low vision individuals use, be able to use their voices. And I, you know, as you've gotten to know me over the past couple of months, you know that I've, I'm very big on advocacy and disability rights and inclusion and I think that that's something that's kind of it's really special and so um I I I always thank you for that because I've always wanted to be able to show and not tell which is something that I do here on YouTube a lot I always talk about you know I do this a certain way but I think that when you've given people the chance to really do something that they have never gotten the chance to do before, or, you know, it's something that they have been trying to get to do. I think that that is really special. And I think that that really does help people to just guide them along with whatever they're trying to do. Like I've told you many times. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope that, you know, just by doing what I do, I hope that you know, others can look at that and, you know, I've had people ask me, well, how do you do it? You know, what, what, mm -hmm. what, how could I do this? And I'm able to, to guide them in, in some uh, form. It, it was a major struggle because I didn't know anything about blogging before I started uh, Bold Blind mm -hmm. So I had to take some online courses. I took a year out, a whole year just to do research on what it was and how it works and even building out the site. And you, you asked about struggles. Um, the site, I think, and managing it is a mm -hmm. major struggle for yeah. me, you know, and, and then too, like you said, you know, even though I have some residual site, um, it's still not enough to do the things that I used to do at the same rate that I used to do them. So, right. you know, I use, I'm used to just doing stuff, boom, 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 and it's done. And now it's like, you know, it takes a great amount of time. You know, sometimes it will take me days getting stuck on an issue that I have to fix because I manage it, you know, the site and the, all the background stuff. I do that by myself. Mm -hmm. So um, it, 
it's 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 complicated but i i hope even given that it that it is that others will look at that and say well if she can do it you know i can do it too because mm-hmm. that's really i think the best the best part of advocacy is being able to lead by example and showing other people that um, what they thought was impossible is, is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so, I mean, how many years have you been have you been doing the full blind beauty stuff? I don't think I ever asked you that before. Yeah, the site has been going for about five years. I think I'm going to be going into my sixth year. Nice. Um, but it's nowhere near what it was when it first started, because when I first started to show you how naive I was, I thought I'm going to post every single day, <laughs> well, <Goodness. laughs> every single day, uh, I was able to do it for, oh, several months. And then I just, you know, had to get real and realize this isn't, it's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. There's some people that do, and they're really good at it, but not me. Yeah, no, I mean, I I can definitely agree with you on that. I've been literally trying to, even just with YouTube, all these, these platforms that we have that we can use, it's like, I've been putting out content all month just because it's a, it's a vlog this thing that people do that a lot of content creators do. And just even with that, it's like, you know, I've been telling you about finals and stuff. And some days I'm just like, whoa, like this is a lot to to, to do all at once on top of everything else, which kind of leads me to the other point I wanted to cover with you because I know you and I talk so much about self-care and what it really means to step back and take a break, which I, I really do admire that about you, that you, on the weekends, you're like, no social media. I'm not doing it to myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm, I'm actually getting ready to take two weeks off. <laughs> Exactly. So see, that's, I, I don't know. I don't know how you do it, but you, but you know, it works for you. And I, I've, I've tried to like stay off of my phone and like get off of social media. So is there tips that you have for people that are maybe like thinking like, hmm, I really need a detox from socials and all that stuff? Well, the first tip I always suggest to people is to do a self-assessment and see where you're at because you can't, know where you're going unless you know, you know, where you're at to develop, to be able Mm -hmm. to develop a plan forward. And then look at the things that you can um, eliminate. I don't like a lot of visual clutter. And that means, and I, I, I say visual clutter is sort of a catch all term for anything. Mm -hmm. I don't like clutter in my physical space. I don't like it in my, you know, electronic space. And I certainly don't like it in my mental space because I have a hard enough time trying to, you know, concentrate and think and get things done. So whatever I can say no to or get rid of, that's what I want to do. Now with the physical space, I am trying to do it more um, on a social conscious level. So like, for Mm -hmm. example, I think I was telling you, I do thrifting now for clothing and and stuff like that. You very seldom see me buy new things. I know that's sort of off topic, but it it just, you know, downsizing and just focusing on what it is that you really need to achieve whatever goal that it is you're setting out to do. Um, Those are really the basic tips that, you know, I share personally and and even on the blog, because it's just that important to me. And especially when it comes to self-care, you know, and our devices, because we're connected to them 24 seven. And like you and I were saying the other day, you mentioned it, Mm -hmm. your phone. I mean, when you're blind or low vision or even, you know, other disabilities, depending on what those disabilities are, sometimes it's a necessity for us to rely on our devices you know, I listen to books, I listen to them all the yeah. time. And mm-hmm. it's, if it's not on my phone, it's on my tablet or, or my computer. So mm-hmm. even though I'm cutting out some stuff, like when I say I'm not going to be on social media, I mean that you will yeah. not see me on social media. <laughs> but that gives me time to do other things that I enjoy, like reading, you know, maybe I might binge, fl- binge flinch, <laughs> binge watch 
uh, something on Netflix or, or whatever, mm -hmm. but it, get, it it leaves more space to really, uh, you know, take care of myself, which is really important. Because yeah, unless definitely. we take care of ourselves, we're not going to be good for anybody else, you know? I agree with that 100%. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just have like a few more things I wanted to discuss with you. Sure. In, in terms of the magazine, because again, you know, that's something that I think has been reaching a lot of people, which I've been seeing all the projects and things you've been working on and all of the people that you featured lately. So is there people or is there magazines that you would want to work with um, in the future? Um. I, I can't mention any specific magazines, no specifics come to mind, but yeah, there mm -hmm. are like fashion magazines, um, maybe uh, magazines that talk about beauty. Um, you know, I would love to be able to partner with magazines and or companies that focus in those specific areas to help change perceptions to help them change perceptions about how they see us as mm -hmm. blind and low vision people. I would like to see more representation. I want to see more blind and low vision people, you know, on the covers of magazines. I want to see them in commercials. I want to see them on the big screen. I want to see them in every area of life as right. people who are sighted. And so, yeah, I would love to partner or collaborate with anyone that is interested in um, accessibility, inclusion, and representation. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's great. I mean, I could definitely, I've told you, I was like, I could definitely see all blind beauty, like just, cause you partnered with so many people that like, like companies or just, you know, brands like, I know A does I design. I keep messing up her name. Oh gosh, Alexa. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I was like, I was in making a video for her, and I was like, I design. I had to keep reading the thing, the paper that she sent me, and I was like, oh right, okay, okay. No, but I know, you know, just I know that inclusion and advocacy is very important to you, and um, just everything that, especially now in this pandemic and with COVID and all that stuff. I know probably just creating content right now must be a little bit harder for you. Um, it is and it isn't. Can you, oh, mm -hmm. you know what? It looks like my battery's running low. I apologize. Oh, okay. goodness. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I see. Let's see. Okay. I didn't want it to die. <laughs> Fine. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm sorry. What was the question? Oh, no, I was, I was just saying, you could, you know, I was just asking if, like, um, if it was harder for you, like, because of the pandemic to put out content or, cre you know, come up with stuff to, to talk about or write about. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think a lot of that, that has eased up a little bit, creating content, because mm -hmm. most of the content is being provided by the people who are um, contributing, like yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and some of our other contributors, along with the folks that we're featuring every week, you know, for yeah. the magazine. So that um, has actually made my job a little bit easier. Um, it's gotten, gotten harder, I think, because I've gotten older and I don't remember as much as I used to. So <laughs> I might want to talk about something or have an idea about something that I want to write about. And for some reason, I just can't find the words. So that's just like a personal struggle that I've been going through. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I can get it resolved. I hope it will ease up. But I'm just going to keep doing the best I can for as long as I can. Yeah, you've been doing great, you know. Thank you. Um, of course. Um, so I guess, you know, if there's anything else you want to share with people, any projects you're working on or anything like that, I mean, I'll link your Instagram and the website in the description so people can head on over there and follow you and all that fun stuff. Sure, sure. Um, the only thing that I would like to say in, in closing is, you know, I really encourage people to um, 
get to know people, get to know their story. You know, it's so easy for us, all of us, including myself, to leap to judgments, you know, mm -hmm. um, when we when we first meet someone. But we really can't know what a person's going through until we give them a chance to tell their story. And really, that's what Bold Blind Beauty is all about. You know, we, we believe mm -hmm. that real beauty transcends barriers. We're constantly... Um, you know, knocking down barriers or, or just going through barriers because we face them every day. Right. But that's, I think that's the most important thing really is um, just being kind to people and being patient and really learning, learning who they are, being curious. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And and if anybody out there is interested, um, Bold Blind Beauty is uh, located at boldblindbeauty.com. Um, and you said you're going to link the Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. And, okay. All I'll put searches. all this. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you so much, Steph, for coming on today. I know it's snowing outside and everybody's like, you know, but... I appreciate you having uh, coming on here. So, well, thank you so much. It's been fun. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.